Good Saturday morning to you. Welcome to Peace Out. Most of y'all are still asleep. Yeah, well, I've been up a while. I actually slept in till 6, <laughs> 6 30, something like that. So, does that count as Saturday sleep ins? Nah, I actually accidentally turned my alarm off. I'm very thankful I woke up because I was going to be late the whole rest of the day. So, I got, I got quite a bit to catch up on. God has blessed me with extra work, and that's a blessing. Now, see, I could complain. But remember we said the other day, do everything without complaining. But praise God. So praise God I have some work. So I'm going to be doing that today. So if you try to get a hold of me and I don't answer, I got my phone off. I don't do that very often. Before I get started, uh, take a minute, run over to Amazon, get you a Bible study guide if you haven't. We've got First John and James both. And I hope to get up. Uh, create some more pretty soon but right now I, I got a paying client <laughs> so, and then I got a couple of devotionals 21 days just to help get you to develop that habit of Bible study but I, please read your Bible that's my whole thing right now just just read your Bible read your Bible <laughs> Lydia says read your Bible you know read your Bible and then I got another devotional 31 days in Psalm 31 I do have several more in the works um I'm just I'm just trying to figure out how to get around to them and, and get them done. I've got tw uh, 21 days with the Prince of Peace, about a third of the way done at least. But uh, so there's more to come. So and uh, I mean for that matter, you could go through these more than once too if you want to. These do have a little bit of room to write in. They're not don't have a lot of room, but you you can actually write in them uh, and answer the questions in the book. So. Uh, they're also available on Kindle if you'd rather just download it and write in your own notebook or something like that. Anyway, I hope you're having a great day. I have had a great day so far. Uh, I had another broadcast before this one, and it's just, God, I just love the faithfulness of God. You know, he says in Jeremiah, when you seek me, you will find me. And I just love that about God. I just love it that that when we set our heart to find him, he doesn't play hide and seek. He doesn't say, oh, you almost found me, but try again, try again, I'll go hide again. You know, he doesn't play hide and seek with us. He's when we when our heart says, God, I, I need you. He says, I'm right here. I'm right here. Well, he's because he's everywhere, right? Uh, was it the psalmist said, when you said, seek my face, my heart said, I got you. I'm seeking you. I'm seeking you now. So when we set our heart to seek God, he meets us right where we are. When our heart is to seek him, and my, my best example of that is Paul, the Apostle Paul. You know, he wrote most, through the divine inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he wrote most of the New Testament, most of the epistles, not all of them, but most of them to the, to the new church that had just been birthed. But he was killing Christians, and he thought he was doing God a service. His intention was right, but his his delivery was way off, right? Because he, he was trying to protect what he believed about religion, and God wanted a relationship. But here's the thing. God met Paul. On, I'm going to write, I'm gonna write all these where God met people's down. I'm going to do a devotion on that, right? God met Paul on the road to Damascus, and Paul didn't ask him to. You know, God, Paul didn't pray okay God please meet me here I need to know you but in his heart he was seeking God he thought he was doing God a service by killing those horrible Christians that were believing that Messiah had already come right he thought in his heart he was pursuing God even though his theology and philosophy and thoughts were way off but God met him on that road to Damascus with a blinding uh, bright light and said why are you persecuting me and he's like who are you, Lord? Lord, I didn't know. I didn't know I was. And so his life was transformed. My whole point is that in Paul's heart, even though he was doing something wrong, his heart was toward God. And so God met him right there. So if we are truly seeking God, he'll meet us where we are. He won't play hide and seek. Jeremiah, is, I think it's in 33, when you seek me, you will find me that's a promise we can hold on to uh, you know it, he will meet us where we seek him he's not gonna hide he's not gonna say well you almost found me or odd I saw you till tomorrow no when our heart is set to seek him he meets us right there and he loves us in spite of our frailty, in spite of our humanness, in spite of our ignorance, in spite of our religion, in spite of our philosophy. He can blow a theology completely out of the water. He can blow your philosophy completely out of the water, and like he did with Paul, and completely change it. Because when we seek him, we will find him. And that has nothing 
nothing to do with what I was going to talk about, but that's okay. So read the word and, and seek God. He will meet you right where you are. Actually, what I want to talk about is in 1 John 4, 4, and it says this, you are of God. Now, this is, this is John, the apostle. Uh, he's elderly and he's writing to the churches. He's writing to believers. He's he's uh, he. I love the I love First John. As a matter of fact, I did the study guide on First John, so you know you could find it more out in here. But um, and I, but I love I love First John. And actually, this was a very hard passage to pull out a study because the first four verses here, four or five, maybe six verses here, could be a whole Bible study on its own. <laughs> it's just like so got so much. Uh, right here. Well, actually, verses seven through um, seven through eleven. This fourth chapter of John is just rich. So I'm just pulling this way out of context. So just go read. Just if you have a minute today, if you don't have something else to read or you don't have a a plan, go read First John four. It's only twenty one verses. Shouldn't take you very long. But just go read First John four. It's just rich. But I'm going to pull this one scripture out because my time's already halfway over. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. You've overcome the spirit of the world. You've overcome the spirit of the enemy. You've overcome the devil. Okay, because here's why: He who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. So God is greater in you. You've overcome, you've over, I'm going to look at it up in a different version real quick. You have overcome the world. You've overcome the spirit of deception because you're trusting God. You're following God. You're seeking him. You've overcome the spirit of antichrist because you have God in you. you. You're seeking him. You're pursuing him. You have, you see, you have to remember that, that you are you are you don't have to worry about uh, this cause it false prophets and and the enemy of your soul is is the devil is lies anything that's not the truth but you've overcome it because you have the spirit of truth living in you you have the spirit of god living in you you don't leave him in your closet when you go to work you don't take the holy spirit off and go okay i'll be back this evening <laughs> kiss him goodbye in the morning you know he's he's with you you don't need, he doesn't even leave you when you sleep matter of fact he said uh, psalm says that he sings over you and gives to you even in your sleep so he and he, he surrounds you with songs of deliverance see god god is for you not against you He's in you. He, you. he can't leave you. We've talked about that. He doesn't have the capacity to leave you. Where would he go? He's already there. He literally cannot leave you, but he also lives in you. So he's got you covered inside and out, spiritually, naturally, physically, any way you want to look at it, emotionally, any way you want to look at it, he's got you covered. And so in the New Living, it says this in verse 4, but you belong to God. Don't you like that? See, you belong. You're not rejected. You're not cast out. God says, you're mine, and I like it. You know, some people say, okay, well, you're mine. I'm kind of stuck with you. <laughs> God don't feel that way. God's like, you're mine. This one's mine. This one was born in Zion. This one is this one is birthed out of my, my spirit and out of my love for mankind, for my love for humanity. I love this person because they belong to me. So you belong to God, my dear children. Now, he's talking about... Um, talk the spirit of god versus the spirit of antichrist um and how to know the truth okay this is kind of what the context is about he's talking about false prophets and false prophets you know someone who teaches something in error is not necessarily a false prophet it, they may just not know yet they don't have that revelation or god hasn't showed them yet or they just flat haven't learned something yet but a false prophet comes teaching trying to trip you up trying to get you off course trying to distract you from the truth of the word of god okay he says but you belong to god my dear children i love it there's no you feel that love that john had for for the church my dear children you have already won your fight with false prophets because the spirit capital s the spirit of god the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit, little s, who lives in the world. You have the spirit of God living in you. You have the spirit of God. Greater is he who is living in you than he who is living in the world, who is in the world, than the spirit. So greater is, I'm going to read that again. You, you've already won your fight against false prophets because the spirit, big s, Holy Spirit, who lives in in you he doesn't come and go he doesn't you know he didn't go to work for the day i'll be back and i don't have when i have time no he lives in you when you trust 
God, when you believe God, when you've gone through his sacrifice, you've accepted the sacrifice of Christ, and you, you believe in God, done the work of God, John 6 tells us the work of God is to believe in him whom he has sent. So when you do the work of God, now you have the spirit of the living God living inside of you. It's, that's just exciting. I'm going to have to think about that all day. You know, uh, Romans 8, 11 says that, that if the same spirit who lives in you big S spirit, lives in you, careful there, (laughs) if the same big capital S spirit lives in you who raised Christ from the dead, he will quicken your mortal bodies. So think about that. The spirit of God who raised Christ from the dead lives in you. So you have already won your fight against false prophets and against the spirit of the world because the spirit of God who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. You don't have to succumb to temptation. You don't have to succumb to to the the laziness in the world. You don't have to live according to the dictates of the flesh because you have the spirit of the living God living inside of you. Is that not exciting? Oh my gosh, that's exciting and I'm way, I'm over my time, but I could go on and on about this. You know what? Remember that God's spirit is called the spirit of peace, right? So you have the actual spirit, the the spirit of peace lives in you. So anytime you need peace, all you got to do is go, up, oh, hey, <laughs> God, <laughs> I've got to have, have some peace. And all you have to do is let that peace, that spirit of peace, the Holy Spirit of peace, rule and reign in your heart and say, don't go that way. You know, if you start to do something and that peace is gone, go, whoa, hold up, what happened? Where did I, wait, wait, where did I misstep? Because I'm going to back up here and find the peaceful path for today. Because his spirit, the spirit of truth will guide you. And when you, when you start to do something and you, you, you feel that peace go, or you feel uneasy, just stop. The world will not end, I promise. <laughs> so trust that spirit of peace who lives in you today. And I pray that you peace out today. I pray that he multiplies peace and grace and mercy in your life today and that he just touches you in an unusual and a special way today. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys tomorrow.